Hi everybody! I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the heart. We're going to be talking about preload and afterload. So let's get into it. Now, if you're not familiar or if you are familiar, this is the equation. So it's heart rate times stroke volume equals cardiac output. And I know some of you have seen this before, and you're thinking, heart rate, yes, got that one, I know what that is. Stroke volume, cardiac output, what does that mean? So let's define some things first. Stroke volume is the volume of blood being pumped out of the heart with each beat. And things that affect stroke volume are preload, afterload, and the contractility of the heart. Contractility is the heart's ability to contract, so the muscles to shorten. That's what contractility means. The cardiac output, which is what we're finding with this equation, is the amount of blood the heart pumps per minute. And that matters. So a decreased cardiac output equals less blood and therefore less oxygen being distributed to the body, to the tissues. So that's a big deal. So because we want to know cardiac output, we need to better understand stroke volume. So to better understand stroke volume, let's talk specifically about preload and then specifically about afterload. Now let's discuss preload. So preload is the degree of stretch, so how much does the ventricles have to stretch at the end of diastole? And the volume of blood that's left in there, sometimes called the end diastolic volume, in the ventricles determines the stretch amount. So more blood means more stretch is needed. And more stretch means the contraction of the heart, right, is going to have to be stronger to push out that bigger amount of blood. And that is called the frank starling Law. So what are some things that can increase and decrease our preload? So things that can decrease it are things like loss of blood, loss of fluid, loss of volume, right? So anything that can cause that, like a hemorrhage, right? So a severe blood loss, there's not as much blood in the body, so there's not as much blood volume to go to the heart. Other things, some reasons we might want to decrease somebody's preload on purpose, like if they have congestive heart failure, Right? So doing things like giving them vasodilator medications or um, diuretics to pull off that fluid, that's actually going to benefit them. That's going to cause less blood volume, less overall fluid volume in the body, and it's going to make the heart beat a little bit easier because it's already working harder because they have the CHF. So we might want to make this happen to decrease the preload for somebody like that. Other reasons we don't want, right? Things like blood loss, hemorrhage, we don't want those things to happen. So those are some reasons the preload might be decreased. Now let's talk about increased. So things we can do to increase the preload include giving fluids, so IV fluids or a blood transfusion. So just like the decreased preload is related to blood loss or fluid volume loss, Increased preload is related to having more, right? Having more fluid, having more blood, that kind of thing. And this is important too, because think about our patients who are losing too much, right? So our patients, they're hemorrhaging, right? They have the decreased preload. We want to fix that. We're going to do this, right? We're going to want to bring it up by giving them IV fluids and a blood transfusion, things like that. So that's preload. So the amount the heart has to stretch and the amount of volume of blood in the heart. The more blood, the more stretch, the stronger the contraction. So that's preload, now let's talk about afterload. Afterload is the amount of resistance the ventricles need to overcome to pump the blood. So the right ventricle needs to overcome pulmonary vascular resistance to cause the pulmonic valve to open so that that blood can go to the lungs and become oxygenated. And then after it leaves the lungs, it goes to the left ventricle. And the left ventricle needs to overcome the systemic vascular resistance to open the aortic valve so that it can distribute that oxygenated blood, right, pump that oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. So things that can increase it and decrease it 
really have to do with dilation and constriction. So to increase your afterload, vasoconstriction. So this could be hypertensive disorders, or maybe we want this, right? Maybe we want to increase your afterload and we'll put you on a medication to cause that, okay? When your afterload is increased, it means your heart is working harder. And then the opposite of that is dilation, okay? So vasodilation can cause our afterload to decrease. So that's something we might want as well, depending on what's going on with our patient, right? So that's preload, afterload. They're important because they affect stroke volume. And if we remember from the very beginning of this video, heart rate times stroke volume equals our cardiac output. And we want good cardiac output because that's how we get the blood distributed to our body. Low cardiac output means not enough blood, not enough oxygen to our tissues. So knowing preload, afterload, and keeping them under control is going to help us with our cardiac output. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.